and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. This is part five of my Best Buddy series and in this video we're going to work more on the lion toy and also work more on the foreground grass. If you're following along with traditional materials such as acrylics or oils, check out part one in this series where I have a list of all the canvas paint and brushes that I use. The app that we're going to be using is Art Rage for Android and I'm going to go ahead and continue working a little bit more on the lion's fur. And I want to add just a little bit more shadow to his tail and so I'm just adding a little bit of a dark brown color and if you're following along traditionally you can use probably burnt umber and mix it a little bit with some orange and white. And then I want to add a little bit of the lighter color of that mixture on his tail where the sunlight would be hitting on it. And just use short rough strokes for the fur on the line too. And I'm just kind of working a little bit more around on the paws just trying to give him a, a fuzzier look because we want him to look all soft and cuddly. And you can add a little bit more on his muzzle as well. And here I'm just adding short strokes to just kind of give a fur texture on his muzzle. And you can use a cadmium orange with a lot of white acrylic gesso if you're following along traditionally. And throw in maybe a little bit of yellow ochre. We just kind of want a really light tan color, but we don't want it pure white because that would be too chalky looking and here I'm just kind of working on the shape of his muzzle and adding a little bit of some browns just trying to to give the indication of some shadows under his mane and around his nose and a little bit under his chin and just making the lines soft and I'm using the hard out smudge tool to soften the lines and if you're following along traditionally, you would use your finger or maybe a paper towel or something. And then I wanted to work a little bit more on her hand where she's holding on to her toy. And you can use a darker brown for the edge of the hand, the, the shadowed parts of the hand. And probably use your number three round brush if you're following along traditionally. And you can also use the, the dry clumps brush if you're uh, using Art Rage. It just makes a, a nice broken line, which is kind of what we want here. We don't want hard edges. We don't want hard lines. We just want kind of edges, and we want to make it look like one side of her arm is sort of in shadow. And then I'm working on the other arm here, and we're using a little bit of the burnt umber on the wrist area there and the palm you're not going to see a whole lot of detail on that arm or that hand but you just want suggestions of her elbow and the wrist and sort of the palms of her hand and just be sure to smudge it in and you can use the hard out smudge brush or for following along with your acrylics can smudge it with your finger or paper towel. We just kind of want soft edges there too. We don't want it to look like a cartoon for this because we're doing a painting and we want a painterly look here. And then here I'm just working on her hair a little bit more and I'm using the dry clumps brush and the size is set really small because I want to give the indication of strands in her hair and I'm just adding more dark along the bottom of her hair and just kind of trying to make it look like that's the shadow part of her hair there and so I'm just adding individual strands there to make it look like it's coming out of her ponytail and everything because that's part of the cute look there and then I want to add some more individual strands in the lion's mane here. And you can use a burnt umber color if you're following along with your acrylics. And just kind of add individual strands there. And then you can add the light strands 
back over the dark ones again in her hair and also you can do that with the lion's mane as well and that's just how you get your contrast as you go back and forth between light and dark colors and that's a lot of what painting is is just contrast just lights against darks and so here I'm just kind of adding a cadmium yellow light with a lot of white acrylic gesso if you're following along with your acrylics or oils or something and you just kind of want to make a, a really light color but you don't want it white or anything because her hair is sort of dishwater blonde and then here I want to go ahead and work on the grass and so I'm using the dry clumps brush here and you can set it to how much load you want on it and how much thinner that you want and it just kind of makes it act more like a traditional media brush there and so I want to add some lighter clumps of grass here because the light is shining through the leaves of the trees here and so you want to go ahead and put in some yellows and some Thalo yellow green, throw in some white with the yellows, just kind of keep it in the green tones, but you want different different shades of green and that just makes it look more like natural grass and keeps it from being monotonous. And then for the shadow colors, you want to use a darker green and probably use hooker's green with some dioxazine purple if you're following along with your acrylics. Just something pine green, it's also called pine green if you're using oils. It just depends on the brand of paint that you have. But you want just kind of a, a darker looking color for the grass in the shadows. And you can use your hard out smudge and art rage to blend these together. And so what you kind of have to do to to get a dry brush stroke look in Art Rage is that you put down a stroke with your dry clumps brush and then you go back over it with your hard out smudge. The Windows version of Art Rage has a lot more brushes and you can actually kind of just make the brushes smudge together on their own without having to use uh, the smudge category. But for the tablet version it doesn't have quite as many brushes so you kind of have to do that little trick and so here I'm just kind of smudging it in underneath the girl we want a, a little bit darker grass underneath the girl for, and that will make the shadow of her and her lion toy and even though they're sort of under the trees there's light shining through the tree there and so she will cast a little bit of a shadow and so will her toy and you can add dioxazine purple if you're following along traditionally and some hooker's green maybe throw in some orange just to make it kind of a darker green color here and again we just kind of want a, a darker green we don't want a whole area of just the same green color because that just looks monotonous and also in real life it doesn't look that way because there's all kinds of different shades of green in the grass there's light colors in the grass there's light green there's shades of orange there's uh, shades of purples in it there's kind of shades of brown so you want to vary the colors in your grass too and if you you want the textured look of grass as well here you don't want just like a big blob so that's why I'm making short little strokes here and then just kind of blending them in and if you're following along traditionally you would probably use your number six flat brush or a bristle brush of some sort just a brush that will kind of give you a, a sort of a uneven look you want the strokes to be kind of feathered out at the end and the way you make them is you sort of pull upward into your canvas and that will give you kind of a a feathery look on the end of your grass and uneven because you don't want it to look real even 
on the ends of the grass because that's just not natural looking. Even when you mow it, there's still some strands of grass that will be longer than other strands. And so that will give you the more natural look as if you, if you make all your ends uneven. And here I'm just adding some more shadow green color there. And you can even throw in ultramarine blue with your hooker's green to, to get a darker green mixture. And like I said, we, we just want to vary the green colors because it becomes monotonous if you just keep it all one green color. And so I'm throwing in a little bit darker in the middle ground here too to show the, the tree shadow right before we get to the swing. And this just gives it more depth and makes it look like there's more trees in between the tree swing and and the distant background trees. And so I'm just kind of using the same sort of strokes but a little bit smaller because it's going to be further away. And then here I decided to use the soft eraser just to kind of soften the the purple look, I thought the purple was a little bit too strong there in the middle ground. So I went ahead and softened that out. And you can do that if your grass is on a separate layer. And that's why I like to keep maybe about two or three layers for most of my paintings. And not only is it a performance issue on Android, but it's just kind of the way I paint anyway. Even when I'm using my Surface Pro 3 or the desktop, I just like to keep it mostly like a natural painting but it is handy to have layers for some of your main subjects because you may have to go back and change them and so here i'm just working a little bit more on the grass adding a little bit more purples a little bit more lights to it and all the time maintaining like uneven clump looks on it and you just kind of want to keep doing that. And it doesn't matter if there's a dark clump next to a light clump. Because in our photo reference you can see that this just gives you the impression of light shining through the leaves here. And that's what we want. And so you just kind of keep smudging that out a little bit. And, and making it more like a, a grass texture. You don't want it real tall grass. But you just kind of want sort of short grass just like it's in a park somewhere and then here I'm merging some of the layers again maintaining that two to three layers that I usually work on I like to keep my background on one layer and then kind of the main subjects on a couple of different layers here and then I'm using the glitter brush here to kind of make it look like there's seed pods and um, grass seeds around and maybe a little bit of some fallen leaves and debris there. And you can go ahead and use the glitter brush to th get this kind of effect. And also you can use it for gravel and things like that. And then I wanted to work a little bit more on the links of the swing. Just darken them a little so they'll show up a little bit better against the background here. And I'm not making real detailed look. Just kind of a texture of some chain links here. Because you're not going to see them that much. They're in the middle ground right here. And I'm using kind of a, a darker gray color. And you can use ultramarine blue and some purple if you want to. If you're following along traditionally, use your dioxazine purple for the shadow color. Throw in a little bit of white acrylic gesso to opaque it. And then here I was working on the seat of the, the swing, just trying to get the highlight on it. So this is the end of part five of my Best Buddy series. And in part six, we're going to go ahead and finish up the painting and add all the final details. So thanks everybody for watching. Thank you so much for your support. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see the final part. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below. And I will catch you later.